welcome to the show. We start this week's Farad's episode with Rising Swell on Forza Horizon 5. They are racing at the Citadel Circuit when some street furniture decides to ruin their day. Not even, even in the normal way. I'm gonna, I've come across that one before. The sign got wedged between the car and the wall and, well, the car lost. The car lost that one and would end up losing the race as well. That's, that's very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Although speaking of, of uh, street furniture, train guy has uh, crossed the finish line in spectacular fashion on the crew too. Now, when you win a race or complete a rack, I can't remember it being a long time since I played the game, you get various prizes that will appear, in this case, on the road in front. As the AI cars finishing the race cross the line, they punt a sign into the rewards and scatter them everywhere. Now, it would be funny if they despawned or something. No, you just have to go drive and pick them up, uh, I guess. But still... The AI were displeased about their race loss and just decided to make a nuisance. Uh, Waffle Saw is up next on Need for Speed Heat. Now they are looking for some collectibles and have found one in the corner. Unfortunately, they managed to get their tiny Lotus stuck in a gap that is exactly Lotus sized. Um, I don't know whether they thought those things were drive throughable or, or what it was, but uh, either way, the car is stuck and it is wedged perfectly in the corner. No amount of going forward, no amount of going backwards is going to help you get out of that one. Yep, that's that's very, very neatly wedged indeed. And, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes the game just doesn't want you to play. Sometimes you just Austin Powers a car. You know, uh, Silver with up next on a Need for Speed Heat is trying to deal with some police cars that have mighty wings, I have to say. Uh, the Faroes Police Department have learnt some new tactics, though. Yes, it turns out if you squish the McLaren between two Corvettes, uh, use the power of the mighty wing, you might just fling said McLaren about randomly, although it does land on its wheels and can carry on, so not quite as effective as some of their strategies. Uh, Dadam is up next on Most Wanted. Now they are racing around. They're leaving the race relatively comfortably as well at this point when the Fiat decides it should just be upside down. I don't know whether there was street furniture there or whether it was just a curb, whatever it was that the car hit, but it was certainly just enough to go for a roll. We move on to Beam for our next clip. High-speed rallying is unbelievably dangerous in this, and sure enough, things are going wrong for the car. It rolls, it lands on its wheels, and can carry on with no damage. Now, I've seen that many times on Dirt Rally. On Beam? No. I mean, it's too much speed over a crest, gets the car airborne and in trouble. It bounces off one snowbank, lands, goes for a roll, somehow avoids the trees, and then lands back perfectly facing the way it was supposed to. Of all the crashes on Beam, that might be one of the kind of luckiest survivals I think I've seen. Uh, E-Roll is up next on a set of Corsa. They are racing at Spa with a uh, older Ferrari Formula 1 car that decides, nope, we're not going to go through a Rouge, we're just going to fly. There's no real sign or, or reason as to why this car decided it should go for a flight. Everything is normal, there's nothing on the track, it just pings up into the air and it's a, you know, tremendous, tremendous accident. Uh, I mean, if we have from this clip, uh, from this angle, sorry. Uh, you can see there's no real, there's nothing, no debris on it. I guess maybe the nose clips the ground somewhere, but I, I don't know. Uh, the gearhead is up next on Farming Simulator. They are playing around and they are making a jump out of stuff that's it's not really a game designed for jumping trucks. They try, they don't quite get the gap right, and they have managed to get their truck stuck. <laughs> The overhangs at the front and rear have managed to get it wedged in the gap, so none of the wheels are touching the ground. Need a little bit more of a run-up. Just, just a smidge. Uh, Grey Matter is up next on Dakar Desert Rally. Now, they are doing a multi-class race, so there's all sorts of vehicles. There are quads, there are bikes. Uh, they are in the car class, I guess. I've forgotten the name of them. Either way, they're racing around. Everything is fine-ish. Up ahead, there is a, t a crash for a quad bike that goes flying through the air. The bike desperately tries to avoid it. Can't. Get The bike gets fired underneath the car and gets stuck there. Uh, the player's car is stuck with a bike under it. The bike then gets respawned inside the player's car. The camera really doesn't know what to do with any of this. As the player kind of pulls over and can't do much. It does eventually get reset outside of the player's vehicle. But it's not ideal. It's not, not ideal at all, that one. Oh dear. But sticking with the uh, <laughs> with the Dakar, uh, we are back with a car. Now this is heading up, or a truck, whatever you want to call pick pickup, heading towards a checkpoint bit where the game is supposed to take control. It's supposed to auto-drive you through here. But no auto-driving is happening. In fact, nothing particularly good is happening. The buggies are climbing over the trucks, and that's 
definitely not what's supposed to go on here. And you can see some of these things have probably hit this quite hard. Um, I mean, the player didn't really didn't quite have time to get on the brakes. They didn't really, I didn't expect to find this. And it's just one of the buggies is kind of respawning and climbing around. This clip goes on for a long time. Uh, and gradually things just... Gradually things move about as they spawn inside each other, but that's kind of all they do. Nothing ha they never move again from this point. It's just the end of the uh, end of the Dakar for that lot. Uh, Trains with Nick is up next, and well, you should pay attention to where you're going because you might not notice you haven't quite finished the train track you're on. Yeah, there's a gap there. <laughs> Funnily enough, trains trains are not very good when it comes to dealing with a gap in a track. Did the back of the did the back carriage stay on the? No, no, it didn't. For a second, I thought the 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 last sort of wheels on that carriage somehow stayed on the on the track, but it didn't. Although it is nothing compared to what Mike spotted on City Skylines. Yes, this is a train that just wants to be free. If anything, it was on a track briefly, and no, now we're just going for... What was that weird game with the bus? I've forgotten the name of it. With the bus that gradually gets longer. Sneaky bus? Was that the one? Something like that. This is kind of the train version. First it goes into the hill, then it's off in over the water. I mean, it isn't sinking, I guess, which is a plus, and now all the carriages are broken. And now we're going to go in a weird formation. That's not how trains work, is it now? That we've got formation flying with train carriages, and I don't think that's ever had to be said before, but it genuinely is. I mean, the actual train itself is... I, I don't even know what it's doing at this point. It's going backwards and forwards, and the carriages have kind of put themselves back into a line. The train's back into the grass. No, we're just gonna... It's, it just doesn't want... It wants to be as far away from the actual line as possible. The carriages are mostly back together. I mean, they're a little bit janky. But they were mostly back together, and now it's just a train spinning around in circles, doing its own thing. It's having a whale of a time. Just, that's not how trains are ever supposed to work. Oh, who would have thought of our episode with the trains having the weirdest of times? That, though, is going to be it for this episode. As ever, if you have clips you'd like to submit to this series, you can via a Google form. There'll be a link to it in the description. All the rules and how it works can be found on there. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a uh, goodbye.